What's going on guys? This is Brain from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today I'm excited to give you guys an updated ranking of the best junior A leagues to play in if your goal is to advance to NCAA hockey. So the reason we're doing this is because last year we made a rankings video for all the best junior A leagues for NCAA hockey and honestly that video kind of blew up. It's a resource that a bunch of people are using and it's our most popular video to date and you know it's great that it's been such a valuable resource to so many of you guys and we've gotten so much good feedback on it. Now the reason why we're making an update here is because there's a few tweaks that I kind of want to add to it and also too that video is a, is a good resource but it's very lengthy it's about 20 minutes long and my goal here is to make a short and concise video that maybe is eight to nine minutes long that you guys can just use as a quick resource so you know what leagues are the, uh, the good ones where they stand amongst the ranking and that way you can make the best possible decisions moving forward in your hockey career now before we dive into the video as always just a quick reminder to absolutely destroy that like button and if you haven't already consider hitting that subscribe button and notification button so you never miss videos like this moving forward. Now just a few quick things here before we dive into the video. Very similar actually as last year's video which you can click up here actually by the way if uh, you want to check that video out if you haven't already. But basically two big things. So first of all the criteria we're using is commits per capita okay and then we're also going to be using caliber. So the, those are the two main things we're looking at when we're ranking these uh, different junior A leagues. The second thing here is that we're going to be excluding all major junior teams and all uh, junior B teams. Major junior because you can't go play um, NCAA hockey that way and junior B because then it gets too lengthy and it's, it becomes a little bit complicated so overall that's the criteria we're going at now without further ado let's dive into this short quick uh, updated ranking list all right so number one hasn't changed since last year probably will never change and it's the USHL always number one here best caliber and best number of NCAA commits per capita case closed for number two here this actually changed a little bit since last year so last year we had a BCHL and NAHL at number three this year I'm actually going ahead and lump the two together because because they're both very very similar when it comes to commits and caliber they both have great caliber of hockey they both commit a lot of guys and honestly they're very very similar so I figured you know what let's just lump them in together and that way I'll get a lot less hate from uh, from people that that were kind of telling me oh the NHL is better than the BCHL all that I get it I get their side of the argument you know I'm just gonna lump them together because they're very similar all right now number three hasn't changed since last year and that's the AJHL really solid caliber hockey a very physical league but also a very skilled league and they move quite a few players onto the NCAA level as well. Number four here, and this changed quite a bit as well. So basically I'm lumping the CCHL, the NCDC, and the mid to top teams in the OJHL as well. Why? Because honestly, they're very, very similar. Similar to the BCHL and NAHL that are similar. Uh, these guys, honestly, they, they produce very similar uh, levels of NCAA D1 and D3 commits. And the caliber, you know, it's, it's slightly different, different styles and different leagues, but honestly, it's very, very uh, comparable and very similar. So I'm lumping these guys together at number four. So now moving on to number five here. Granted, we already kind of gave a hint in the number four, but basically we got the lower or bottom end teams in the OJHL and I'm putting the SJHL here as well. Last year we had the OJHL completely above the SJ and you know there is some argument to that, but I think the bottom end teams in the OJHL, while they're still good, they're still here at number five, neck and neck with SJHL teams. I really do think that there is a difference between these bottom OJ teams and the mid to top OJ teams, uh, the CCHL teams and the NCDC teams. Now for the SJHL, you know, it's hard to compare the two. I'm putting them both at number five, mainly for the number of um, NCAA advancements there are between these two uh, kind of teams. But I would say like the top teams in the SJHL would probably beat the, the bottom teams in the OJHL on a given night, but it's very, very close, you know? And I would say that's, that's why I'm putting it at number five for these two. All right, and number six now, and the order hasn't changed here, is the MJHL. MJHL, still a really good league. You know, really rare to have NCAA D1 commits at this point, but honestly, it's very good for NCAA D3 commits and even some U Sports commits as well. It's a solid league. Again, a very physical league because it's in Western Canada. Uh, you know, got some really skilled hockey players there and overall a good league to go to. If your goal is mainly to go play NCAA D3, I'd say it's a solid league. All right, now number seven here, we got the EHL. So the order hasn't changed since the previous ranking either, but basically the EHL is a great league if you're an older player who wants to go play NCAA D3 hockey. They actually have the num highest number of uh, D3 commits per capita in the whole league compared to all the other leagues. So honestly, if your goal is to go play NCAA D3 hockey, EHL is a great place to go. All right, so moving on to number eight here, and the, the order hasn't changed since last year either, and that's the NOJHL in Northern Ontario. So basically, there's good a number of NCAA D3 commits out of this league. You also see some ACHA D1 commits. You almost never see any NCAA D1 commits, not, not since the last time I checked. Uh, it's, it's extremely rare if you do see it, just like the EHL. But honestly, it's a solid league. It's got 
got some good caliber, you know, but I would say, you know, scouts, you know, at the NCAA D3 level probably prefer the EHL more than the NOJHL, but it's still, the caliber is very, very similar. But I would say the EHL still is above the NOJHL because it has more commits if your goal is to go play NCAA D3 hockey. So that's why I got the NOJHL below the EHL in the rankings. All right, so after the NOJHL, and these guys are pretty neck and neck, but I have to put them a slight caliber below, is the top USPHL premier programs at number nine. And the reason why they're a little bit below the NOJHL is although they're similar, if not a little bit better in advancing to, to NCAA D3 hockey, I would say NOJ, the top NOJHL teams can probably beat out the top USPHL premier teams. Now, I might get a bit pushback from here from uh, some uh, USPHL premier coaches we work with in the top programs, but I do think that that's the truth, you know? And But if your goal is to go play NCAA D3 hockey, so these top programs really do still advance quite a bit to, um, to, uh, to NCAA D3 hockey. So it's a great option for you. If you can't really, you know, crack the lineup in some of these top programs or whatever, um, the, these higher end leagues, if you wanna go a place where you're gonna play, you know, dominate and get a lot of ice time and, and get a good chance at advancing into NCAA D3 hockey, these USPHL premier programs, the top ones are a good place to go. All right, so moving on to number 10 here, and that is the SIJHL. Now the SIJHL, I would say it's a, it's a step down from the NOJHL in terms of caliber, but but um, in terms of advancing, you know, still another step down from the NOJHL, tends to AD3 hockey, but you do see some advancement there. So it's not a terrible league by any means. I think the reputation they have sometimes is a little too harsh. They do advance some players and the caliber is, is not too bad over there. So I do think it's a decent league to go to if uh, you have a team that really likes you or where you're gonna get a ton of ice time. All right, now last but not least at number 11 here, I have the USPHL Premier, so the lower to mid-end programs uh, and tied with the NA NA3 HL as well. Now I put the NA3 HL below last year, but uh, this year I figured, you know what, the you know the lower to mid end programs in the USP Premier are very comparable to the the, the mid end programs in the NA3 HL. There are a few exception programs in the NA3 HL that are very strong that move players on and all that stuff, but overall they're very comparable. And I think in terms of caliber, in terms of advancing players, they're very similar, and that's why I'm lumping them together here. All right, now that's the end of our list. But you may have noticed if you're paying attention and if you know the leagues very well I skipped a few leagues you know and similar to last year I did this as well and the lists here haven't really changed is because the rest of the leagues here either you know are good caliber but don't really you know focus on NCAA or you know the caliber is not very strong and because of that they don't really uh, advance NCAA hockey so here are the leagues by the both scenarios so first starting with the two leagues that have actually really good hockey but they just don't focus on NCAA hockey and that is first the MAJHL in the Maritimes and the second league here is Junior AAA uh, Hockey League in Quebec now again very good caliber hockey just you know NCAA coaches don't scout there really very much for whatever reason now the exception I want to say to this is is if you have a really good family advisor or a really good coach that prides themselves on advancing you to NCAA hockey, these leagues could be a good fit if you're gonna get a lot of ice time, but that is a very uh, small percentage of the time that that happens. So I just wanna give you guys a quick warning. You know, there's better options to look at if uh, your goal is to play NCAA hockey than these leagues, just for that factor, unless you have a really good person pushing you to NCAA programs. And now the four leagues here that I'm gonna mention that I just wouldn't recommend going to just because they don't have a strong caliber and they don't really advance to NCAA hockey. Uh, the first one here is the WSHL at the Western States Hockey League, except for some few teams that actually do, but I would say that's the first one. The second one here is the EHL Premier, so that's the league below the EHL. It's kind of like their farm league. Uh, third league here is the USPHL Elite, so that's the third league under. So you got the NCDC, USPHL Premier, and then USPHL Elite. I would say avoid uh, the USPHL Elite, not really a good spot to go to. And the last one here is the GMHL in Ontario. I wouldn't really recommend guys go in there unless they really have to. All right, guys, that is it for the updated 22 rankings video we hope you enjoyed it we hope you got some sort of value out of it hopefully this video can be used more as a resource now for the guys that have you know seen the other video that just want a quick update as to what all the best leagues are you know my goal long term is to make an update every year because leagues change right and make a quick update every year as to which leagues are the best to go play NCAA hockey if you think that's a good idea drop a comment down below to let us know and we'll keep updating this list as we go year by year all right if you like this video if you got any kind of value out of it and you haven't already consider 
consider hitting that like button. It goes a long way to help the channel out and to help this video reach more people. And if you're new here, if you haven't already, if you like this kind of content, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on that next one.